The lights are off and away they yeah, go. Extremely loose. He's managed to hold on and they get He missed the, the complete bit. <laughs> He's crazy. He's side, Freitas is on the grass on the info before. He slides through. He tags her. They hail from around the globe, and though separated by oceans, they gather in the virtual world to battle, to compete, to race. Whether they're former champions looking to regain the title, new and eager hopefuls driving for glory, or legends in their own time preparing to dominate, they're all here for one reason alone, to win. Today we'll find out whose name will be forever etched into the record books, you're watching the Blondies MX-5 World Tour. Greetings and welcome to the QRS Blondies MX-5 World Tour, sponsored by Blondies Bar in Long Beach, the place to be. You are watching this live on the Global Sim Racing Channel and today we are at Road Atlanta for round number 4 of Season 8. I am Richard Losper and glad to be back after missing the last uh, race two weeks ago. With me in the broadcast booth I have Ayrton, I wish I could race again, Ellis. And league organizer Bill, have I got a quote for you, Zan. Directing the broadcast action today is Giancarlo Lenzi, assisted by some great camera sets from the inimitable Dougie Beard. Well, guys, Ayrton, the track details Road Atlanta. I see that we have an overcast day here today. It's going to be a good race. Tell the folks at home about this track. Thanks, Richard. Well, the full course is very famous uh, to a lot of drivers but we're on the short course today it's only 1.76 miles long or 2.8 kilometers and has only 10 turns and this track is known for being quite a roller coaster for having a lot of elevation changes and a good combination of tricky turns so it should be a challenge for these guys we're going to be doing a 75 minute race so a little bit longer than what we're used to with the 45 minute races so it's a uh, two-stop strategy as well for these guys since they only have uh, 28 percent fuel so it's going to be a good challenge yeah, certainly will be that, but let us have a look at how uh, a driver will have to negotiate this track. So, uh, Giancarlo, play us that lap guide. Thank you. All right, let's do a lap around Road Atlanta's short course with Richard Losper behind the wheel of the GSRC MX-5. Coming down the front straightaway towards turn one, very fast right hand flick. Really got to carry your speed through here because you'll see right after the apex on into an uphill. So you got to have your momentum going. Get the car to the right as far as you can and then straighten it out for braking for three. Over the crest, clobber that inside curb. This is such a blind corner, very difficult to get it right. Now into the S's. These are flat out all the way through, but you got to get the line just right, especially this last right hander. Very thread the needle, just clip that inside curb and then hug the inside all the way up over the hill onto the back stretch. Now you're back to the main course. Coming down to the chicane, this is going to be your best passing opportunity on the whole track here. So you got to size up the competition, but it is possible to defend through here. So you got to watch out because the guy might try to fight you hard for that position. Then on up over the crest and down the hill, it's flat to the floor all the way to the finish line from here. But that is a lap around Road Atlanta short course. Welcome back, folks, to the QRS Blondies MX-5 World Tour. Now, Bill, we, uh, we only have a few minutes left before race time, so take us through the standings quickly. Yeah, I'll do this real quick. Uh, my yard's in front up there. 
Uh, it's going to be a good opportunity for a lot of guys to catch up because Eklund, Jelenko, Peterson, Lopez, uh, Gelink are all not here today. So it's a great opportunity for those guys. McAleer, Freitas isn't here today. Mora and Yaman and Sanchez, to, uh, Cecilia, he doesn't need Sanchez anymore to, to make their way up and have a good uh, a good showing. Also, you won't see on the chart there is our Jan Kumbis is down in 15th, but expect him to do well. I'm going to go ahead. Eric Garcia is 40th, and Stefan Overgaard. Dries Nyes is 29th, Matias Sony and Reno Tani. Yanni Tulianen, as I work my way up through the field, and 25th is Jonathan Keir in the Roadster. Uh, 24th is Benjamin Nelson. He wants to stay out of trouble. Uh, 23rd is Robert Ripple. Uh, Jacob... Uh, uh, Bushes, uh, Bushesny is ahead of him. Our longtime veteran, Joseph Arrow, starts 21st. Derek Holland, a rookie, in 20th. Uh, I'm sorry, in 30th. I'm giving you the wrong decade there. In 29th is Roy Visser. 28th is Mihai Masison. 27th, Jiren Yersum. Diego Isguel is in 26th. Ahead of him, Anthony Celentano and Lino Chastang. Getting up to 23rd position is Sonny Ketchum. Timo Tulianum way back in 22nd. Trevor Mack, there's a veteran in 21st. So that takes care of the back 20 as they're starting to grid right now. Aaron, why don't you take us up from 20th? Then we have Dole John Boldrin. Ahead of him is Andy Morgan. Then Benjamin Lanouette, Simon Van Joon, Guillermo Rato in 15th, Sam McLear in 14th, John Deuce Allen in 13th, Tom Ratchie in 12th, Brad Wooten in uh, 11th, and then Thomas Sabo in 10th. Richard? And in 9th place, uh, Jay Yanis. In front of him, Carlos Torres. Oki Stokenberger in 7th place. Ooh. Evan Maillard, the first of the quick six guys, starting in 6th place uh, today. Sergio Moura just in front of him in 5th. MJ Yaman, Tomoki Kono, Jan Kuman starts in 2nd place. And the pole position today is G Jesus Cecilia. And they are getting ready uh, for a start momentarily. We see the revving of the motors right now. The green flag flies and Cecilia takes them away. Followed by Jan Kuhlmans. Followed by... Uh, who's next there? Oh, a whole pile of them at this point in time. Jesus Cecilia still in the lead going into turn one. Jan Kuhlmans uh, attacking from behind already. Tomoki Kono in third place. MJ Yaman a very good uh, fourth place. A little way off the f top three already, Etten. <coughs> yeah, it looks like a lot of side by side action, uh, side action going to turn one, but they've already managed to get themselves single file as they head through the S sections. And Evan Mayard is, uh, is uh, starting um, in sixth place. He has uh, worked his way past Sergio Moura already, and he is now in fifth place. He will have MJ Yaman in his sights, but here comes Moura making an attacking move on the outside, Bill, already uh, on uh, uh, on Evan Mayard. I wonder if this is Evan Mayard's day today, but uh, how did the back uh, markers start up? Everybody's clean, but oops, I just had a car spin off. It's the blue car of, no, John Deuce Allen again. That's his. Oh, dear. Every race he has trouble. Well, John Allen is known as a hard charger, uh, and unfortunately, you charge hard at the beginning of the race. Chances are you'll get, get yourself into trouble as he's struggling now to get across the track and get into pit lane. But, uh, Ayrton, uh, what's happening at the front? Uh, it looks like uh, the good, good start from all the guys up front. Yeah, I also just want to know that Oki Stokenberger got a slowdown penalty as they went through the chicane last lap by. He's now dropped down to ninth place. He got another slowdown uh, penalty in uh, the turn three, so he's really dropping back now. He's actually pulling over. I think he might be exiting his car. Ah, uh, that might be the case. I'm looking at him at now. Um, the number 70 car has, in fact, retired. Is he going to just forget about this race? Oki Stokenberger is known for two fast laps and then... <laughs> quitting the race. Back to the front though. Jesus Cecilia still leading. Jan Kumans are still behind. They are negotiating lap number two, just coming to finish that lap. The Moki Kono right on the rear bumper of uh, uh, Jan Kumans. And MJ Yaman still hanging into uh, hanging on to that fourth place. But now we see Evan Mayard in fifth place. 
still trying to make his way past MJ Yaman. MJ Yaman's having none of it. Um, very good racing from all of these top guys. Uh, Ayrton, the first three, they absolutely nose to tail. This is going to be very interesting. Remembering, of course, this is a 75-minute race. Why don't you, at this point, Ayrton, just tell us what will be the keys to winning this race? <laughs> Well, as you said, it is a 75 minute race, so these guys, they're going to have to make two pit stops. Uh, these guys can go about 25 laps, I mean, sorry, 25 minutes on each uh, pit stop. So there's going to be some variety when it comes to pit stops. Some guys might go late first pit and then an early second one, or two early first ones or two late second ones. So there's going to be probably a lot of variety, and I'm interested to see how it goes. Looks like Evan Meyer is looking to try to make a pass on Amjad Yaman going into the chicane. They're staying side by side. Evan Meyer is going to go into the dirt to get a run, but Sergio Moore shoots to the inside. He's going to make it three wide as he gets past Amjad Yaman. He's on the inside for the final corner uh, to get that position from Evan Meyer for that fourth place position. And there was some minor contact, just a little touch uh, between uh, Yaman and Evan Meyer. Um, didn't do any damage to anyone, but uh, uh, MJ Yaman lost out there as uh, Sergio Mura uh, certainly uh, got by him as well. Now he's trying to make a move on Mura again through that very, very tricky chicane at the top of the hill there at turn number three. Can't get it done. Sergio Mura hangs on to uh, the fifth place, which is where he started. Mayat is past him and uh, having a look. But right up front there, Ayrton, we have uh, uh, Jan Kumitz making a move on Jesus. And I think he's got the job done there. Yeah, it looks like Cecilia just got a bad exit that let Jan Kumitz go right on by. So these guys now switch for that uh, first place position. And it looks like actually only about the second time this season that Jan Kumitz has actually been fighting for the lead. He's had two uh, really bad results so far this season. So it's good to see him back up the, at the front. Well, uh, Bill, uh, Jan Kummens is a, is a winner, a uh, past winner at this race, as he uh, gets a very bad exit out of the last turn. Was that actually a slowdown? Because uh, Evan Meyer just sailed by as well as uh, Tomoki Kono, uh, and he's dropped all the way back to fourth position now, and he's under threat there from Ooh, uh, Sergio Mura as well. Go ahead. Evan Meyer had, had contact with Cecilia. They uh, just touched uh, while going through turn two. Both of them are okay, though, uh, thankfully. But uh, Kono actually went by Cecilia going through turn one. Evan Meyer tried to follow him through. He's actually bumping Cecilia's rear as well. Cecilia is going to go wide as they go through turn five. So these guys are really bumping and banging at the moment. Tough racing here at Road Atlanta, as we see now. Uh, Jan Kuhlman is determined to get that position back. Cecilia kind of uh, uh, blocks him a little bit there, not intentionally, just defending the position. They go into the chicane side by side with, oh, and they're uh. off. They're Evan Mayard and Jesus Cecilia off. Uh oh, oh Cecilia in the ricochets. Who was that? Carlos Torres got hit. Dear oh, dear, we'll get that on a replay and see what happened there, Bill. Yeah, my yard was, they were really, uh, tra that's, that is trading paints. Do you have that yet on the replay? Yes, that's it. I'm sorry, that was actually uh, Tomas Zabo. I got hit in the side, so he's now exited his car. I think he'll be out of the race. Yeah, yeah. ugly stuff there. Trying to go too wide through the chicane. Not possible. Cecilia comes across the track again and unfortunately collects Tomas Zabo. Very, very uh, sad to see that happen to uh, three great drivers, but uh, I'm not quite sure where Maillard ended up. Is uh, Well, he is, yep. I'm not seeing him there. He's in the pits right he's now, so he's pits. taking a toe. Yeah, go ahead, Bill. He's in the pits, so, um, and it looks like he's just exited out. I didn't think his car got that much damage. No, he, he had a crash afterwards. The next lap oh. ran into the wall. Dear, oh dear. So that is two of the top drivers out at this point in time. Now, let's jump back to the front. Tomoki Kono is in charge of this race. Jan Kuhlman's away back from him now. Tomoki is a very, very hard man to catch when he's in front. Um, he has a very strange driving style, um, Ayrton, that I've noted. He, uh, he weaves across the track uh, whilst he uh, negotiates turns. Uh, you'll see if you watch him closely, uh, he'll go into a turn, he'll go to the right and come back to the left. Uh, that's just a part of his driving style. So uh, uh, guys will have to be careful in a, in a close racing situation. 
and uh, he controls this car immaculately, so uh, he's going to be very hard to pass. Yeah, Kumon's actually cut off about uh, three tenths of a second last lap, so he's closing in on Tomoki Kona. You can actually see a little bit visually. Uh, maybe in the next couple laps, he'll be able to get back within draft range, and you can actually get a good draft going into that chicane. So this is an opportunity for Kumon. He has to catch up to Tomoki Kona now, and he's actually got Amjin Yama and Sergio Moore and Jir Chan is right behind him as well. That's correct. Uh, Sergio Mora looking uh, uh, aggressive today. Uh, Sergio has a couple of penalty points uh, to his name, so he'll have to, uh, 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 he'll have to be careful because if he accumulates any more penalties, he might be in trouble. But he's looking now uh, at the rear end of Amjet Yemen, and just behind the two of them, we do have Jay Yanis. So, uh, Bill, it looks like some of the old guard, if you like, uh, back in business. <laughs> Well, yeah, with Cecilia and Maillard taking each other out. Now, I'm on IRT duty, so I have to kind of... I'm not going to voice opinions on what's going on or who was right or wrong this race, but I will say this. I don't think it was necessary for Maillard and Cecilia to be battling so fiercely. Uh, it's a 75-minute race. It seems pointless to be doing that. Well, uh, my, uh, uh, the good part of this is... Um that uh, in oh as we see a move from Sergio Mura on MJ Yemen gets the job done through the chicane there Eton a good move and we see uh, Jay Yanis taking evasive action otherwise he would have slammed into the back of Yemen right there but uh, he takes a bit of grass but uh, no problem no foul there and now uh, Yemen under attack from Jay Yanis yeah, right ahead of these guys. Also, Kumis was right on the bumper of Kono. He's closed up uh, two seconds in two laps. Kono must have made a mistake, but Kumis actually got a run on that front stretch. Didn't decide to go for the move, uh, so he's probably just waiting the patient game at the moment, waiting for a good chance to strike. Yeah, I think. Yeah, Kono and um, we will, uh, 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 Bill. We we want to come back to the keys of the race. We didn't actually get that done. Uh, the race is settling down quite well. We'll keep an eye on what's happening at the front. You keep an eye on what's happening at the rear. Lots of action. But Ayrton, let's do uh, uh, the keys of this race properly. <coughs> yes, yeah, so before I mentioned the uh, pit stops, how guys are going to have different variety in pit stops. Uh, so we talked about that, but what I also want to mention is the pit entry here. We've mentioned previously uh, in the last few races, last time we were at Road Atlanta, that the pit entry here is really quite difficult. You can go into it really fast and gain some time, but guys have to be careful about that oh. wall that's right there. Wooden just got turned by, it looked like, I'm not sure, oh, Janice got turned. Sorry, it's Janice got turned by, I think Brad Wooden got him. Hey, yep, Jay Yanis was off track there for a moment. He's got back on track. He is just crossing the start-finish line. We're getting a replay of that. And uh, uh, sorry about that, Ed. And every time uh, you're trying to get the keys to the race done, we have an interruption. It's called racing. But uh, Jay Yanis, uh, uh, unfortunately, uh, lost out quite significantly back down to and, about eighth place right and now. Kumans and has we gotten see him around up there on the grass. Go ahead, Bill. Kumans has gotten around uh, Kono for the lead. Well, that is very interesting indeed. Jan Kumans uh, passed Kono there. And uh, Kono now in second place. Sergio Mura. Ayrton, Sergio Mura. I'm liking what he's doing here today. Yeah, these, these guys are actually battling really well. Besides that conflict between Maillard and uh, Cecilia, they've been racing pretty clean. Looks like Moore actually might get a run on Kono as they exit the chicane, going to the final corner. Let's see if he actually gets a run. Going on the front judge, you can actually make some moves into here. He's going to get a good run. Let's see if he goes to the inside. Yeah, and it, uh, he's just behind him. He backs out of it. Good move there, Sergio. Turn one is very, very fast. You're probably doing about 100 miles an hour going into turn one. Uh, trying to get the overtaking done there is uh, pretty risky. Uh, going through turns three and four down through the SS here, not a place to try and overtake Bill. In fact, almost suicide to do it. But uh, uh, these guys, you know, they are great drivers, I've got to say. And uh, they don't mind trying an overtaking move anywhere. The best place, of course, to overtake is uh, at the end of the long straight here, going to that chicane. But uh, let's see if uh, Sergio Moro will try something um, at this stage. The, the, the straightaway is much shortened due to uh, this being the short version of the track there, Edin. But uh, still, you can get a bit of draft going through there. 
Yeah, you definitely can. And also, I, I, I kind of just want to put bits of the keys of the races, like in the midst of talking. Uh, another factor that will probably come into play is tire wears. If the while these guys are battling a lot, this track can really eat up your tires. And we've talked about some of these guys have talked about how much the car understeers. So I'm wondering if these guys might change tire wear strategies uh, throughout the race in their different pit stops. Like one pit stop, take no tires, or a second pit stop, take all tires, or take just left sides on one stop, or just right sides on the other. So I feel like there would be a lot of variety in that kind of strategy as well. Absolutely. And uh, just want to make mention here of uh, Brad Wooden. Now, Brad Wooden, I'm not quite sure where he started. I'll have a look at that in a second. But he's made his way up to fifth position now. And just behind him, Sam McAleer as well. So these two guys have come through from wherever they started. And we'll find out where they did start. Uh, they've passed the likes of Jay Yanis, who uh, has had a few mistakes already. Uh, well, a few unfortunate incidents already today. Uh, and Tom Raffi, Bill, you'll be happy about this, up to seventh place. Yeah, Wooden and McAleer have been going at it, and Raffi's right behind him. Oh, uh, and Tom Raffi, as we speak, he's off the track, coming up the hill there into the final turn, loses the position to Jay Yanis. Uh, I, I won't mention his name again, because every time I do, he has an accident. Yeah, Raffi's in the title influence car. Get the plug in for one of our sponsors of the race. They actually pay to have that car race here. Giannis is making a nice move after being spun by Wooden. I was saying that McAleer and Wooden uh, have been making, they've been behind each other nose to tail most of the race and working their way all, all the way back up. And McAleer's having a great season right now. So with the with those leaders, those top guys who didn't show up and with, with Maillard leaving, it's going to be a great opportunity for these guys to get some big points today. Well, that is correct. And uh, uh, I will tell you that Tom Rathy is pretty good at this track. Um, I recall when we uh, did an official race here, Ayrton, he was uh, one of the guys battling uh, for a first place most of the time. However, having said that, uh, we are in, uh, he's in amongst a bunch of drivers who may just be uh, slightly um, more aggressive than he is. Tom is the consumer gentleman, as Bill will probably tell you. Uh, race is really really clean um, so uh, this is a rough and tumble uh, stuff in these races you need to have eyes in the front and on the back of your head and on both sides as well <clears throat> and Erdin it looks like it looks like Kuhlman's is pulling away from Kono but uh, the guys behind him are, are we're gonna have a nice battle for second third and fourth aren't we yeah, and there's also a lap car, Joseph Arrow, right ahead of these guys. With how short this track is, lap traffic is going to be a big issue for these guys, and it's going to it's going to be an issue throughout the race. They're only on lap 14 and already uh, bumped into lap traffic. Well, that's right, and that indeed is the uh, number 46 machine of Joseph Arrow, um, who uh, looks like is the virtually the last car on the lead lap at this point. A couple of guys still behind him, or maybe they have passed him. Uh, Driss Nice is uh, uh, stated as being in number 33rd place behind uh, behind Joseph Aero. But now uh, we see the, the true standings as they cross the line. So, Coleman will be coming up to uh, take the position. He passes him now. Uh, Aero does the right thing, goes to the, the right-hand side of the track, giving uh, the open section, uh, open track to Jan Coleman. The Moki Kono passing as well. Sergio Mura getting through the MJ Yammer now in fourth place. Guys, this is lap number 14. Uh, pit stops are going to be critical, and Joseph Aero just comes to a standstill to let all the leaders through. Uh, that uh, that in itself is pretty risky, uh, uh, Ayrton. Yeah, this track's actually fairly narrow on the first half of the track. The second half widens out a little more, but guys have to be careful about slowing down too much, especially if they're letting guys by because they can cause accidents, especially if there's some too wide scenarios going on between some drivers. Uh, apparently, there's also some contact between Lino Chestain and Andy Morgan. I'll, I'll get back to you on what happened. Okay. Well, while you're having a look at that, uh, Bill, let's go back and have a look at uh, Timo Tulliana. Now, Timo has been one of uh, our stalwarts in previous seasons, uh, won a few races, has raced very well here in the Eagles Nest Tavern car, um, sitting way back in 19th place today. Yeah, he's having a tough time getting things going as he just got around uh, uh, Benjamin Nelson there in that in that yellow car. You know, my spotter pointed out that we have a nice battle. If we go up and look at 11th position to Carlos Torres, he's been slowly dropping positions. He started in 8th, he's dropped down to 11th, 
And uh, behind him now is Benjamin Lanowitz, and there's a great battle if you look at Lanowitz, and that's in the McDonald's car, Trevor Mack there. They're battling for 12th and 13th spot. Uh, Lanowitz is a two-time Ironman champion, and uh, Trevor Mack is, is notorious for being good on this track. So that's a nice battle there. Is they're, they're looking to get to the top 10. Yeah, they are nose to tail at this stage, uh, no doubt about that. Trevor Mack looking for a way past, but... Uh, and we see some smoke up ahead of them there. Uh, there's a slow car. Who's That's Joseph Aero once again, I think. He's just come to a standstill there, Ethan. What is he doing? Uh, very cautiously letting people by. I'm guessing, I'm guessing he's been taking lesson from Hiro Kanaya. Yeah, it's gonna... Oh, we know Hiro if you watch any of our races. Uh, it's gonna be a long race for him. As he get 75 minutes of that, it's gonna be... Uh, should have packed a lunch or something. <laughs> I'm just wondering whether he's got some damage there, it, and then that's why he's uh, running so slowly around. Maybe he's trying to get into pit lane. Yeah, we got some word that he actually spun, so he might be struggling with some damage. If that's the case, he might want to try to do his early pit stop. He might be not wanting to go into pits too early, so then he could still uh, fulfill just two pit stops rather than having to do three. So he might just be waiting it out then. Yeah. Okay, so Trevor Mack and uh, Benjamin Lanowit have been battling um, throughout the, the time we've been speaking here. Uh, Trevor Mack uh, backs off coming through the SS section there wisely, I guess. And uh, they are coming up now on uh, Carlos Torres in the number 12 car there. Carlos uh, not uh, running too well, although we know he is a pretty hard charger. He's not doing a, a great job at this stage. One of the guys that we should have a look at uh, is, uh, in fact, uh, Dujon Baldron, who uh, quietly has been going about his business. Also, just ahead of him, Simon Van Dune. These two guys find themselves in the top 10 right now, Bill. Yeah, it's really interesting. you got Rathi in 8th and then Baldron in 9th. Uh, sorry, uh, uh, Van Dune in 9th, Baldron in 10th. Now, Carlos Torres, as we said, is dropping. He's in that uh, kind of brown. Uh, he's from uh, Colombia, so he's in a brown coffee colored car for him uh and then behind him is like we talked about is lanowitz and mac and i think that's going to be a good battle because lanowitz and mac have been wheeling in tours so that's a battle for 11th 12th and 13th really what's going on a quick shout out way back behind them is sunny ketchum a rookie and right behind him there's a nice battle go back there director it's ketchum and visser battling for 14th and 15th we don't need to stay on that but they're doing a nice battle in the back there yeah, there's a, there's a good battle going on between the 59 machine there of, uh, or is that the 58? Sonny Ketchum and, that and is Roy Sonny Fisser. Sonny yeah. in the 59 machine and Roy Fisser in uh, the number 88 car there. Uh, Sonny Kenshin is my neighbor, as uh, Bill indicated a couple of weeks ago, uh, even though he lives a thousand miles away. Yeah. Um, and of course, <laughs> Roy Fisser, um, who is an old driver, gone... Uh, into these cars, and he's doing a pretty good job of it, Ethan. Yeah, we actually saw him at the uh, GSRC Invitational race as well. He, he was pretty fast there, so he's definitely a fast driver. If he puts a lot of practice in, he could be a top runner. Uh, and being in the top 15 of this field of 43 cars is definitely uh, a pretty good standard. Yeah. Now, just a, a word about guys like uh, particularly Tomoki Kono and uh, Sonny Kenshin. These two guys, Sonny Kenshin. He was the guy to beat in the Mazda Cup uh, um, up until last season. When the advanced Mazda Cup started in the iRacing official series, Sonny and Tomoki made the switch to the advanced Mazda Cup. And both of these guys, Sonny uh, is struggling in the advanced Mazda Cup as he's finding out that uh, he's never ever raced on any of the tracks bar the free ones. And all of a sudden he's got to buy every track every week and practice and he's having a hard time of it and has said so in the forums. Tomoki Kono, on the other hand, has made the switch to uh, the Advanced Series pretty well and he is so fast that he can run in this kind of company, uh, uh, in the company of people like uh, Jan Kuhlmans. And uh, in fact, Sergio Mura has got by Tomoki Kono uh, Ayrton and he's now in second place. Yeah, as you're just talking about him, uh, Sergio Moore managed to go on the outside of him and get that position. So now Tomoki Kono falling back. Both these guys are actually two and a half seconds behind Kumin. So Kumin's already getting a very large lead. And these guys are just going to be left battling for a second now. Yeah, this is well, exactly what Kumin's needed in his in his 
points portfolio. It was a nice race. Pick up a win here will do him a load of good. Now, it's a long way to go, but uh, uh, Cummins and Mora, that'll help both of those guys out. Uh, director, if you could, real quick, let's go back to Timo Tulianen. Back in, where is he? He's got a nice battle going on with uh, uh, Anthony Celentano. It's weird to see Timo so far back here. Yeah, Timo Tulianen, um, at this point, uh, he is following behind Andy Morgan who's trying to make a move on Leon uh, uh, Lino Chestang uh, through the chicane there gets the job done as Lino really lets him by and now Timo Tulianen coming on the inside of Lino Lino's having a bit of a rough time there uh, Timo Tulianen will get the job done you're very tricky to pass uh, when you're that close to the inside uh, going into that last turn there but he gets the job done and he is still following uh, Timo Tullian and still following Andy Morgan, who's doing a great job. Andy is uh, one of the mid-back drivers in the official series, but he's doing a great job here today in 16th place. Back to the front, Ayrton, where we see that uh, Brad Wooten starting to make inroads on these top four guys. <laughs> Yeah, Brad Wooten showing definitely a lot of pace. Uh, he started in 11th place. You wanted me to get up the starting positions for him and McAleer. Uh, McAleer actually started in 14th, so these guys have had really good drives up into the top six of the pack, and Brad Wooten's probably looking to uh, contend for this podium as well. Well, indeed. Remember that Brad Wooten in the race at uh, Sebring a couple of weeks ago, he uh, ended up in second place in front of uh, Uros Jelenko, who is no slouch behind the wheel of the MX-5. Brad Wooten is looking at Amjad Yaman now, who has slowly uh, moved backwards uh, um, uh, from his starting position, which was in uh, fourth place. Mind you, at this point in time, he is still in fourth place, so he hasn't moved backwards at all. But uh, these, both of them, Amjad Yaman and Brad Wooten, uh, starting to breathe down the neck of Tomoki Kono. So Tomoki having a, a, a bit of a tough time there as they build. They're going to be coming up on a, a fair bit of traffic very soon. <laughs> yeah, now Aaron Wooden has been able to distance themselves from McAleer. So Wooden's really up there. He's in the top five right now. McAleer's slowing down. Yaman into, have, the, pits. Uh, Yaman into goes... the pits there. Now there very goes the Kumins move. as well. So we have Yamans yeah, and Kumins into in the, the pits, pits as well. Sorry, guys, we're talking of each other one at a time. Ethan, go ahead. I was just saying, Cummins and Yaman are into the pits. They are first uh, pit stoppers of the front runner, so this oh, should Tomoki be interesting. Oh, Tomoki Kono, sorry, sorry, Ethan. Tomoki Kono off on the grass, out of turn one. That's going to uh, uh, take him. Oh, he comes back on track, but he's lost the position now to uh, Brad Wooden. Sorry about that. Oh, just went, just skim the grass on the exit, and that really catches you out. If you're going to skim the grass on the exit of turn one, you're going to definitely get sent very far out and lose a lot of time. Uh, unfortunate for Tomoki Kono. Yeah, he's lost one position, though, uh, so not uh, the end of the world for him. If he, he didn't hit anything, so that's a great, uh, uh, great recovery from him there. But Brad Wooten now moves up into fourth position. Bill, I'm sorry, we were talking of each other there. Go ahead. <coughs> No, that's fine. Kumins and Yaman are out in about the same order they came in. Uh, those are probably, when you're talking pit stop strategy, those are probably the two best in, in the business. In fact, uh, uh, Yaman has been nicknamed the doctor by uh, our fellow commentator Joe Peek. Uh, I guess he specializes in pit stop stology. Pit stology, that's what he does. He's a doctor of pit stology. <laughs> All right, back to you. And uh, to, uh, as we were speaking there, a couple of the other top guys, Brad Wooden, Sergio Mura, went into the pits as well. And Tomoki Kono, uh, he must be wondering, what, what are these guys doing? They're going into the pits. Uh, oh, crikey, we've got to pit twice here. So Tomoki Kono, not pitting at this point in time, he is now in command of this race in the number one place. But well, that will not last for long as uh, he will have to pit. It remains to be seen, uh, Ayrton, where he will come now, out of Kumins the pits. Kumins is going to get by Mora here as he's going down the straight right now. I think Mora is just coming out of the pits right now. It's going to be so, close. I yeah, think Kumins is going to get him. Mora, but Mora is right behind him. So Mora actually gained some time. He's going to get uh, slotted with a, another car in between, and that's the Thiago is Quill. So uh, there's a lot of cars actually in this pack that these guys have really come out into. So that's going to cause a lot of issues. Yeah, Eric, I think I, you're right. I think Mora made up some time because he was well back of Kumins. Uh, he's got him right in sight now. If he can get around that lapped car, he might be able to get in there get the draft and hang on to Kumins. 
Yeah, T uh, Tiago Ezekiel, um, not a bad driver. I've uh, I've seen him around in in the official races. He now sits just in between. Mura thinking about uh, trying a move there. Decides no, it is not the right time to do this. Uh, so he'll um, he'll stay behind him as we see a car out on the left hand side in front of Kuhlmans there gives Kuhlmans the right away Tiago goes into the pit so that answers that question just in but there's another one now Anthony Salentano in between uh, 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 Sergio Mura and uh, Jan Kuhlmans but uh, these guys will be uh, first and second once the pit, uh, st pit cycle goes through it and yeah, Brad Wooten's really taking advantage here. He actually passed Amjad Yaman through the pit stops, and he's sitting right behind Sergio Moore at the moment as well. Almost uh, made a move on him as they fought for turn one, but it looks like actually Amjad Yaman had contact with his spun car. Oh, we that got a car Matthias upside Swanee. down. Amjad Yaman is probably going to be out of this race. Yep, Bill, Swanee's did on you his say a, a car was upside down? Well, that's, that's what Aaron was saying. He rolled it. Swanee got clipped and rolled it around. I think uh, our director will have it for you. Yes, we are looking at the replay now. That's Amjit Yemen. Uh, did he clip another car? Yes, oh. he's going into... Who's that in front of oh. him? Yaman Tebowed Swanee there. That's a... Uh, that's... I think Erden's right. I can't see him coming back from that. That might be the end of uh, Amjit's day. No, he's already oh, left dear. the session. Yep, Amjad Yaman's left the session. We'll go through that in a minute. I just want to mention that Tomoki Kono has, in fact, gone into the pits. He is just exiting now. So, pretty good pit stop for him. Didn't take any tires there, uh, which uh, I'm not quite sure what the strategy will be for these guys, Eton, with tires. Do you take it late or do you take it early? Tomoki Kono definitely did not take tires there. Yeah, he also lost a lot of time. I imagine that these guys, they're going to take tires on either one of their two pit stops so it's going to be either the first one or the second one they they'll decide which so uh, you said that Kano didn't take tires and he actually lost a lot of time so that's probably not great for him uh he's going to be put down i think after all this about fourth place no i think he's ahead of more in fact there goes more around him right now so uh well maybe i'm not looking at the right car was that Kano slowing down yeah uh, yeah, it's, uh, Sergio Mura is currently showing in fifth place, but a couple of cars that have yet to put Sunny Kanchen in fourth place, uh, showing on the timing and scoring, is in fact uh, not in fourth place. He has to pit and Dijon Bolden as well. So really what we have is Jan Kuhlmans is actually leading this race and it's all coming clear now. Sergio Mura is in second place now. Behind Sergio is Brad Wooten Ayrton. So that's the real top three at this point. Yeah, and Sam McGlear actually caught up to Tomoki Kono. He's right behind him as Tomoki's trying to pass a lap car, almost having contact with Benjamin Nelson, as Sam McGlear does as well. So Sam McGlear might be able to get this fourth place position. Yeah, Sam McGlear to go on the inside of the lap car, the Benjamin Nelson that was, and uh, got it done successfully. Um, but uh, that was touch and go there. Now Sam McGlear chasing Tomoki Kono, who um, is, uh, as you said, uh, had a bit of a slow time. Sam McAleer, has he done his pit stop yet? Yeah. Okay, I, I thought he might have done. Um, he's right on the back now of uh, Tomoki Kono, so looking to take that place, which is fourth place. Meanwhile, uh, Jan Kuhlman, Sergio Mura, Brad Wooden, really impressed with the way uh, Brad is driving in this uh, series uh, this time around, uh, Bill. Yeah, well, he he certainly has the experience and the speed to do well in here. I apologize to the viewers there. I, I, Benjamin Nelson has a yellow car that's similar to uh, uh, Kono, so I, I misidentified them. Kono's comfortably running in fourth place right now behind Wooden and Mac Lear in fifth. You know, if we go back a little bit, Giannis is in sixth after having had that little spin. And let's give a shout out to uh, the title influence car, Tom Rathy, in seventh place, having a nice run for Tom. Uh, let's go back a little bit. We can go over a run up the top ten with this since they've cycled through. Uh, Van Dune is in eighth place. Uh, Carlos Torres in ninth place in that coffee-colored car. And there's a nice battle. They're still going at it. Torres and Lanowitz. They've been battling before the pit stop, after the pit stop. We'll see how that plays out. That is quite correct there, Bill. Uh, we've got the 0-1 car of Benjamin Lanowitz and the number 12 machine of Carlos Torres. 
and just in front of them uh, Robert Ripple but he is a lap car so these guys are having quite a good battle back in uh, eighth or ninth place which is not at all a shabby position to be in in this sort of company Ethan. Oh yeah the competition in these races are just immense and uh, you even said yourself Sonny Kanchin he was top runner in the Mazda Cup he's sitting in 14th place at the moment so a lot of good drivers here. Absolutely. Now, uh, guys, we, uh, um, we've got uh, MJ Yemen uh, in the interview room there, and um, we might take an opportunity, Bill, to have a chat uh, there with uh, MJ and ask him what happened during that incident he was involved in. Oh, and we have a touch there between the 01 and uh, Carlos Torres in the number 12 car. We'll talk to MJ in a second. But these guys battling really hard here for that 10th place. Uh, and they just had a little touch, nothing nothing serious. They both got through it okay, but uh, that's the nature of racing uh, at the, in the series and on this track. And uh, these guys are just uh, trying to do the best they can. Benjamin Lanowit hanging on to that number uh, 10, uh, sorry, uh, Carlos Torres was hanging on to ninth place, but that's been taken away now by Benjamin Lanowit. So, uh, Bill, back to you again. We've got Amjit Yaman in the booth with us, uh, with us right now. Have a chat with Amjit. <clears throat> Amjit, we'll talk to you while we look at McAleer and Kono are really going at it for fourth and fifth. Uh, Amjit, uh, nowhere to go on that one, huh? Yeah, stuck in a rock, became, stuck became a rock in a hard place. You know, he spun oh, the, oh, guys, let me just break in here. Kono touched the back of Sam McAleer, uh, got off track a little bit, managed to save it through the S's, back on track again. <laughs> sorry about that, but McAleer has taken that place. They were talking to each other, said, oops, sorry, and they'll go back at it. Yeah, uh, Amjad, uh, boy, with, with all the drivers not here today and Maillard dropping out, man, this was set up for you in your style where you can finish well to have a great race didn't work out for you. Yeah, I was really wanting that, that podium this week. I, I knew this was my opportunity and, and it just fell out the wayside. Yeah, it was the point. Everything had laid out perfect for you. I really thought you were going to get a podium. Well, you not only did you not get a podium, but now you have a bad finish. So, uh, sorry about that. Hey, how was the... Uh, did you make it to the first pit stop? Yes, I did. Okay, how were the tires holding up? Uh, they gave up about halfway through the stand. I mean, you can still push it, but not as hard. Those new towers on the, on this cold weather, man, they are really strange. Strange? Are they fast or just strange? Uh, fast for a little bit, but mostly <laughs> strange. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's interesting to know. Well, Amjit, uh, feel free to stick around if you'd like. Uh, uh, I'm sorry for the way things turned out, and let me give it back to Rich. Thank you, Bill. And uh, we'll go back to the front now. Um, Ayrton, uh, the top three uh, coming into traffic uh, as we expected. But uh, the traffic is thick and fast at the moment. Maybe we should just have a bit of a rundown uh, for the viewers. We are on lap 31 of 67. So approaching the halfway mark. Let's just run down through the top 10, I guess. <clears throat> Yeah, well, Ian Kim is still leading away. Four seconds behind him is Sergio Mora. Two seconds behind him is Rad Wooten, who actually just recently got held up by some lap traffic. Then there's Sam McLear in fourth place, battling with Tomoki Kono in fifth. Then Jir Janis in sixth. Tom Ratchie in a really respectful seventh. Simon Van June in eighth. Benjamin Lanouet in ninth. And Carlos Torres in tenth. Yes, uh, you said it. Uh, very respectable seventh place for Tom Rathy. Let's have a look at him in the title influence car. We know that he likes this track and we know that he's pretty good here as well. Just keeping it steady, there's uh, nothing much in front of him. Uh, quite a distance to uh, a lap car there. And behind him, we've got uh, um, uh, Tiago Izikil who uh, is keeping pace with him but uh, is way down so not a threat so he is definitely having a good race i'm trying to see where the the other place uh, behind tom is number eighth place that's simon van doon he's a uh, way back so so uh, i guess tom rathy is in a, a safe zone at the moment bill yeah i think this is a good time uh gl bring up the graphic for 
Last call brought to you by Blondies. And you guys interrupt me if anything exciting happens up in the front. Blondies, last call when everyone gets more desperate and less unattractive. We're going to start in the 30th position all the way down Robert Ripple. He's a rookie running three laps down, comfortably staying out of everybody's way. We'll go one spot up to 29th. That's Joseph Arrow in 29th. You know, he's been a very slow letting guys drive. Benjamin Nelson in 28th position in that yellow cover car. He's a rookie. His goal is just to let guys get by him without causing trouble today. One spot up is who we just talked about is, uh, uh, I don't have any idea how to say this guy's name. Siegel is Siegel Ezekiel. I like Ezekiel. Sounds like a nice Bible name there, uh, but probably has nothing to do with it. And let me move on. Uh, he's running in 27th position. We go up to 26th position. I like this one. I have no idea if I say this like, but I like to call it Dries Nyes because that sounds cool. If I had my kid last name of Nyes, I'd name him Dries. Uh, he's running in 26th position in that dark colored car. Hey, Eric Garcia in the other Blondie's car, in that charcoal Blondie's car, running in 25th. Reno Tanny in 24th. There's a nice battle. Let's stay on that for a second. It's a Garcia and Tanny running for 24th and 25th. Go at it, guys. One spot ahead of them. You'll see him right there in that only yellow roadster, that yellow and black striped roadster, as there goes Reno Tanny by Jonathan Keir. No, that's a nice battle going on back there. I think I found out. Oh, we'll go one spot up. Is uh, is Billy Bob Wright up in 22nd position? So uh, that'll take us all the way through. Up, oh, let's go one more. I'll wrap up. I'm dominating the microphone. We haven't heard much from this guy. Let's go up to Jiren Yersum in that pink colored car. He races that. It's a Barbie car for his dollar, for his daughter. And the last one, we haven't heard anything from Derek Holland. He's running in 20th position. Okay, that's your Blondie's last call. Sorry for the guys I didn't get to. Blondie's in Long Beach, the place to be. Richard. Thank you, Bill. Well, I have to say, um, up the front there at the moment, Ed and uh, Jan Kuhlman's running away with this one. We know he loves this track, and it's about time that he had himself a good race because, uh, as Bill mentioned earlier, he's had a, a few rough times uh, in the start of the season. Good to see him up the front again. Okay. I just got, I'm sorry. I just got a message from the director. It's Drivas Nisch. Drivas Nice? Is that how you say Dries Nice? Okay, not even close. Drivas Nice? No, it's still wrong. Say it, director, in my ear. Nice. Now, I, I will Dr tell oh, you Dries how to... Nice. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Back to you, Rich. Uh, drives Nice? Yes. Uh, Dries has actually uh, told us in the forum how to pronounce his name. It is Dries, and the surname is Nice. So Dries Nice is uh, his name. Um, he's a very good driver in the official series, um, just coming, uh, he's a new driver, pretty much only joined iRacing uh, a few months ago, but he's doing well and good to see him uh, doing well in this race as well. Now, uh, Ethan, um, I was talking about uh, Jan Kuhlmans and uh, just saying how it's good to see him up, up the front again. Yeah, he's back to the uh, good old Jan Kuhlmans that we know and love. Uh, when he gets into the front, he can definitely pull away really well. He has a five and a half second gap from Sir Jim Mora. So definitely back to the old comments. And I'm glad that he's back up there. That will give us, if he, if he continues to sit in the spot, we'll probably have a third race winner for this season out of four races. Yeah. And, uh, uh, you know, it is good to see that. Um, the uh, Evan Myers, Oki Stokenbergers, the Mazabo, look at the, the list of drivers, Bill, who are out of this race. Uh, most of the guys, uh, the newer top uh, drivers, are out of this race. Yeah, let's give a uh, director, let's go to sixth position and Yuri Giannis. He's having a nice race. You know, he's notorious for having bad luck. He's working his way through traffic right now as he just gets around uh, Reno Tanny. Uh, Working his way up and ahead of him there is Jonathan Kurt. He had that early incident where he got turned, but he managed to get collected all. And let's go ahead and stay on. Let's see how he gets around Jonathan Kurt. Jonathan is great at letting guys around. Lift a little bit, Jonathan, and let him have the inside there. And that's how you do it. That is correct. And Jonathan uh, did just touch the brakes there to let the faster driver through. Good driving from Jonathan Kier. Uh, not fighting for position, so why hold up the faster driver? As we see, maybe a slowdown for uh, Jay Yanis. 
Uh, he did uh, get really wide going through number three there, or turn three there, but uh, looks like he's okay. No, he's slowing down. Uh, no, no, he's okay. He's okay. And in front oh. of him now, I, I want to go back to Tomoki Connor, who is in a battle here with Sam McAleer. This Ayrton is a good battle. Uh, Sam McAleer got by him and uh, he's not letting go. He's right on the rear bumper of Sam McAleer trying to get that position back. Actually, I don't I don't even know if he's trying to get it back. He had, he had a great opportunity to get the move into the chicane there, but he decided to actually just sit behind uh, McAleer and just push him. So I'm wondering if he's wanting to sit behind McAleer, maybe noticing that they have some speed on Wooten and they want to catch up to him, but he's still five seconds ahead of them, so they will have to really hope that Wooten got caught up in traffic or made a few mistakes. Uh, otherwise, I think Kano should be battling for his position rather than uh, working together so much. Yeah, that good point you make there, um, as we see Sam McAleer going through the S's now, just uh, pull a few car lengths out on Tomoki Kono, but uh, here's where the draft kicks in right here, uh, going uphill and, uh, and down the hill once again uh, on the uh, part of the straightaway. Uh, he should catch right back up and be on, uh, on his rear bumper as they get to the chicane, which is the case at, uh, as we speak. And so uh, once again, a new lap starts and they will do the same thing over again. I think you're right. I think he's not pushing too hard. Uh, we are only on lap 38 of 67. So we've just passed uh, the halfway mark uh, three or four laps ago. So plenty of, uh, of race laps to go yet before we, uh, we have to get desperate. And uh, he breaks uh, quite early there. Sam McAleer uh, just sitting in front of him. I think he's doing a very smart thing, just uh, uh, learning the track. I don't think he's had that much uh, lap at this track. So he's got a lot of uh, learning to, to do on all of these tracks, but he's doing a good job of it. Uh, yeah, let's no. go back. Oh, I'm sorry. Let's go back and, and document a ninth place position is Duljan Bolden. He's in a nice battle. We we talked about Lanowet and Torres have been going at that at all race. There's a nice battle for 9th, 10th, and 11th back there. Dujan Bolden, uh, Benjamin Lanowet, and Carlos Torres. And back behind them, a little ways back in the McDonald's car is Trevor Mack. Well, you're absolutely right there, Bill. Benjamin Lanowet, very impressive drive from him here today. Um, he has got Dujan Bolden in his sights. He has uh, managed to um, get away from Carlos Torres just a little bit. Carlos uh, is now probably about uh, seven or eight lap, uh, eight car lengths back. And now he's coming on to the back of Duljon Baldwin. And uh, they're going down uh, the hill now towards the chicane. He thinks about making a move. He more than thinks about it. He's going to try it. He'll get the job done. Nice job, Benjamin. Good driving and uh, very aware driving as well from Dujon Baldwin, uh, seeing that uh, the move was made and just giving up the position and living to fight for another few corners. What Bolton, uh, what Lanowood is going to want to do is try to finish on the lead lap. He loves to to do well in the Ironman contest, how many laps you can put in, how many miles you can put in. And uh, he's 40 seconds back right now of Cummins. If he can finish on the lead lap of a 75-minute race, that would be a great accomplishment on this little short track. Yeah, now Dujon Baldron is not giving up. He coming down uh, through the S's uh, from turns three to about turn seven. Uh, very risky try and overtake here. He's not trying to do that. He's just staying with Benjamin. I think he's a little miffed by the fact that uh, Benjamin took his position away and he's going to try something perhaps uh, going down towards the chicane. He uh, stays behind Lanowet at this point in time. Lanowet goes a little defensive there. In fact, a lot defensive, Ayrton, and uh, Dujon does get the job done as Lanowet did previously, but he goes a little wide coming through the chicane oh, and Lanowet will get an opportunity to pass and so does Carlos Torres. So Dujon Baldwin, just by that little mistake uh, coming through the chicane, lost uh, uh, another position as Lanowet and uh, Carlos Torres now battling hard uh, for that position. And we're talking about 10th, uh, 9th, 10th and 11th place. Aaron, these guys have been putting on a show all race. Yeah, Dolchon Voltron got completely uh, swarmed, uh, I would say, after that mess up in the chicane. He actually goes on the outside again of Carlos Torres. They're going to go side by side through turns four. Carlos Torres actually was uh, in the top of the pack 
at the beginning of the race, but if you remember, he had that contact with uh, Jesus Cecilia after that spin, and that caused him, I imagine that he's still struggling a little bit with that contact, or he it set him back during his pitch stop. So he's trying to recover back up to his eighth place qualifying position at the moment. And this is goes. a great, you said it, Bill, this is a great battle. Now, Carlos goes to the uh, inside uh, for the chicane. He is going to try and move, and then he decides, no, he won't. Dujon Baldwin, very strong in the chicane there. Uh, uh, takes a lot of, uh, um, I guess, uh, uh, intestinal fortitude, Ayrton, to uh, <laughs> come to that chicane at 120 miles an hour and then decide whether you're going to try that overtaking maneuver or not. Yeah, and it makes it even more difficult to decide when uh, you can pass on the inside or outside and make a oh, clean pass Benjamin easily, but it looks Landwehr like Benjamin Landwehr. Out on the grass, Lewis managed to save the car, didn't hit the wall, so he's lost that position to both of these guys right now. Sorry, uh, Ayrton. Yeah, as I was just saying, the chicane, you can pass on the inside or outside fairly successfully, so... Uh, that just makes it even more difficult to decide if you want to try to make a move or not, especially if someone's defending on that inside, you can go to the outside freely. Now we have a, a, a word that uh, McAleer and Kono are in a fierce battle. Indeed, they are. So Kono has managed uh, in the laps that we were talking about the other guys um, to pass Sam McAleer. And uh, uh, Sam McAleer doesn't like that at all. And he's coming back through the S as they go. Uh, Tomoki Kono actually pulling out quite a gap there, Ayrton, on uh, Sam McAleer going up the hill now. Uh, this is a tough hill. It looks pretty easy, but uh, the car wants to keep going to the left all the time as you're negotiating that loop. Uh, it's almost like a, an over loop. Uh, you know, it reminds me a lot of NASCAR driving as you go through that loop. But now Sam McAleer closes up under braking into the chicane and we see lots of dust around. So somebody's been in the, in the dust there, uh, but uh, can't get uh, closer to to, to Moki Kono as we see someone going into pit lane there as well so uh Tomoki Kono now got the bit between his teeth and uh and, and pulling away from Sam McAleer Ayrton yeah and we're also coming up uh pretty close to the 50 minute mark of the race so pretty soon the second pit stop window is going to open for these guys I'm interested to see their strategies coming into this will guys take tires will they not uh if they took um more fuel in the f first stop or if they like pit it later, they're gonna have to take less fuel in the second stop. So these strategies might come into play, and I can imagine some uh, positions getting shaked out. For example, Brad Witten could lose some time to these two battling for fourth place. Yeah, now our yeah, top, that's that's our, true. Go ahead, Bill. Our really our top guy that come in is is Yuri Giannis. Now he's our running in six. He's in the pits right now, so I don't think anyone's ahead of him. Rathi has also come in, and let's see who gets. We'll just watch this. And Yanis is going to get out ahead of Rathi the way it should. So we'll keep an eye on Yanis, see how he does as Kuman makes his way through traffic. Yeah, and you know, guys, I've been watching the, ba the well, it's not a battle, but I've been watching the gap between Sergio Mura and Brad Wooden. Um, probably the last 10 laps or so, it has not lessened at all. If anything, uh, Sergio Mura uh, gets uh, a half a second ahead and then Brad Wooden makes that up again. Uh, that's obviously traffic coming into play there as we see Brad Wooden now coming up to Anthony Salentano, I believe that is. Uh, Anthony Salentano will be put a lap down by Brad Wooden coming through the S's. Brad Wooden is a pretty hard charger. Um, if you don't get out of his way, he will uh, come up on you at full speed and maybe even tap you. So uh, he has to be real careful here because uh, negotiating the lap traffic can end your race if something silly uh, happens uh, during the course but he goes to the inside makes the move on Anthony Salentano into the chicane Anthony backed out and gave him some room there and allowed him to pass otherwise that could have been a little nasty now in front of him is Andy Morgan Andy Morgan will be no problem he is a gentlemanly driver Andy and will allow Brad Wooden to get by but uh, Brad Wooden trying to uh, catch uh, Sergio Mura uh, there's only about a second or so between them now, Ayrton, so it looks to me as if he is catching. Yeah, Mora actually heads into the pits. Also got word that Kumin's actually had contact yeah. with Robert uh, Ripple so yeah. to the side of his car, so that might cause him some issues. Ayrton, I was watching that, and they, they uh, Ripple actually got scared off the track there. They were so close. 
Kuman seems to be okay, but boy, it was it was really scary. Well, I'm glad that Kumans uh, did not uh, have a problem there because uh, uh, the last thing I want to see is Kumans have an accident and and uh, have to uh, uh, leave the race. Uh, at the moment, he does look okay. I've got the cameras uh, very much on Jan Kumans at this point in time. Uh, now we see him going into the pit, so that's a good move on his part. Whoa, crosses the grass uh, going into pit lane there. That's a strange move. And Mora is out of the pits. He's ahead of, came out of the pits ahead of Yana. So we'll see how Mora does right now. He's on the, uh, just coming around the backside of the track right now. Yeah, this this will be a benchmark, uh, uh, Bill. Uh, Jan Kuman's just approaching his pit stall. Let's see if he takes some tires yet. And that's what we wanted to see. So I'm pretty sure he will take tires, but... Uh, Yes, left side's going on there, so looks like the guys are taking tires. You have to take tires. You can't do 75 minutes uh, on one set of tires here. Yeah, some guys the, might have Mora, tried to take tires the first Morris Mora's through the chicane now and heading onto the main straight. Go ahead, Ethan. Yeah, so some guys might have tried to take tires the first stop instead of the second one, so then they wouldn't have to take tires the second oh. stop. Mora's going to jump them. Mora's going to jump Kumans in the pits. Kumans is leaving the pits as we speak. Where is Sergio Mura at this Just point? He comes him. out. Uh, there goes Sergio Mura. Yes, Sergio Mura did uh, manage uh, to pass him. So uh, a longish stop there. Uh, took four tires, did uh, uh, Jan Kuman. So uh, he'll have his work cut out to catch uh, Sergio Mura. But Sergio Mura coming up to lots of lap traffic, as we will expect uh, on this uh, course. Uh, there'll be lap traffic everywhere. So. I think Jan Koeman's uh, Ayrton will have an opportunity to catch up uh, because Jan Koeman's makes very short work of this lap traffic. Ayrton, yep. Ayr well, Ayrton what, what, did, what did Amjad Yaman mean when he said new tires are weird? Koeman's is on weird tires. Is that good or bad? Uh, I can only think unpredictable. <laughs> but the thing to note here is that Sergio Moore had a 7 second faster pit stop. The reason for that is because he only took left side tires. So Cummins is going to have an advantage on all those left uh, left turns. Right. Or well, correct. you know, I have to say, taking tires only on one side, I don't know. I've never, ever done that. Um, we'll have to see how that plays out in this race as we see Sergio Mura charging through the lap traffic there, going really wide through turn one. Now, uh, uh, Cummins might be held up a little bit by this lap car just in front of him who is Lino Chestang. Uh, isn't that the guy he had the contact with in the last race, Lino Chestang? Uh, I'm not sure. I'm reading here Amjad Yaman. Uh, Amjad, you can feel the pipe in if you'd like. He's typing in our text here that the tires feel soft for, for three or so laps and they warm up and the weather's a big factor. So it's nice to have somebody who was on the track get an idea of what's going on there. Those four tires against two tires are going to be very interesting to see how that plays out. Yeah, and I, I, honestly, I, I do think that uh, that Jan Kumans will have an advantage late in the race uh, over uh, um, over Sergio Mura. But Sergio Mura at this point is our leader, even though it shows that Tomoki Kono uh, is leading the race. Tomoki is just a little bit off strategy. Uh, Mora, in terms sorry. of when Mora's he Morris got a traffic. Let's go to Mora. He's got a squadron of cars in front of him. Yeah, that's Jonathan right. Uh, and he's being slowed down terribly by uh, uh, the car in front of him, who is Jonathan Keir. And then again, Reno Tani in front of uh, in front of Jonathan. So this will not make him happy. He's got to now wait uh, going up the hill onto the back straight where he will have an opportunity to pass these guys. But what has that done? Stefan Overgaard is behind him, another lapped car. Then we've got Lino Chestang and steaming onto uh, the back straight there is Jan Koeman. So this, uh, uh, remember that Jan Koeman will have the same problem trying to get through these guys. But uh, um, I do think that uh, Jan Koeman may be slightly better at getting through the traffic than Sergio Mura. So Sergio Mura has got his problems. Uh, uh, well, he's got his problem solved now. He's passed all of them. And now we'll see how Jan Koemans... Jan Koemans gets uh, a good uh, run. We see... Uh, uh, who is that? That's Stefan Overgaard going really, really wide there. So that was no problem for him to pass. Now into turn number one. He's got all that lap traffic. Then through the chicane. And then uh, Ayrton through uh, the S's there. This is where things could turn nasty. 
Well, please be careful, Jan Kumas. We do not want you to have an accident. Yeah, Sergio Mora actually lost uh, about half a second to Cummins through that lap traffic, but now Cummins has to go through and do all that Mora did. So this actually might work in Mora's favor if Cummins gets held up by even more time. Well, Mora caught yeah. those guys right at the S's, which is the worst place. Looks like Cummins is going to get him on the on the back straight here, so it might be a little easier for him. And Alino Chestang is blinking as well. That's not going to help Jan Kumans at all. Jan Kumans manages to get through one car, two cars. Jonathan Kier steps out of the way again. Good driving from Jonathan as we've come to expect. So only Reno Tani to go before he can uh, set his sights back on Sergio Mura. But uh, I tell you what, uh, this lap traffic always a problem in any race, Ayrton. And more so when, uh, when you're so much faster than these guys. Yeah, Tomoki Kono, our leader before the pit stop cycle ended, has just come out of the pits. I'm not sure if he, I didn't get a chance to look if he took tires, but he actually came out ahead of Brad Wooten and Sam McAleer, so he's now gotten back into third place. Really good pit stop for Tomoki Kono. Oh, that's good stuff. Good to hear. So uh, we'll watch his progress because um, he has now all that lap traffic to pass. Let's see where he is at the moment. He's behind Anthony Salentano, who's in 19th place. So uh, he would have come out in around 20th place. And uh, he has to uh, make his way through all of this traffic. Anthony gives him room to go through. And uh, uh, he is coming up on a bunch of cars now. Coming into the chicane. The 73 of Lino Chestang, I dare say. Uh, once again uh, featuring a lot uh, as a left car with uh, <laughs> with the guys and here we see Brad Wooden right on the back of in fact passing uh, Tomoki Kono is that for position Ethan? Yep Brad Wooden into third place. Excellent stuff Brad and now Brad Wooden will have the problem of the lap cars but that was uh, that was probably uh let's just bring in uh mj diamond you spoke about cold tires i think that tomoki kono just being on cold tires as we see a lot of action here side by side lap cars everywhere trying to get through this is very very risky will they make it uh through the lap traffic we've got them going side by side once again Ayrton you've got uh, Lino Chestang you've got Stefan Overgaard you've got Reno Tani in front of them and you've got two fast guys going side by side very risky stuff going down to the chicane here yeah, it looks like Kono is going to try to go on the inside into the chicane. They've got the two lap cars ahead of him, Stefan Overgaard and Lino Chestnut. They're going to go three wide on the exit of the chicane. Sam McAleer, in the meantime, is caught up uh, caught up to these guys. He's going to go on the inside of Tomoki Kono and going to get into that fourth place and now battling for third. Unbelievable driving. Good awareness from Tomoki Kono there to stay out of trouble. And now he's uh, making a move now on Sam McAleer. Sam McAleer has just passed him. He gets the job done. As we see Sam not giving up on the outside. Bill, this is uh, good, good racing from these top guys. You know, that's what lap traffic is. And, and they're going to complain about it in the forum because drivers like to whine. But what I saw was nothing but uh, good driving from back markers and lead cars as well. Well, yes. Um, I... The you can't make your car invisible. You're going through the chicane. You got to put it somewhere. Oh, what a battle going on between those two. Well, indeed. Sam McAleer desperately trying to hold off um, Tomoki Kono now going to the inside. Sam thinks about going defensive, but it's too late. And Tomoki Kono is going to try and make a move on Sam McAleer. Does not get the job done. Sam defends fiercely. That uh, just proves the point, uh, what you said there, Ethan, that you can defend uh, from the outside uh, going into that chicane. And this is exactly what Brad Wooden wants, too. These guys battling it out, going side by side. That's going to let it, give him an opportunity to break the draft and run some laps on his own to uh, get ahead of these guys. And that's the situation these guys were in before the pit stop. They were too far away from the draft to catch Brad Wooden. They don't want to lose Brad Wooden to fight for this podium. Well, that's right. And uh, this is a good battle. And this is for position. We are talking third, fourth, and fifth place at the moment. Let us check in, Bill, with Sergio Mura, who is our race leader at this point in time. The gap between himself and Jan Kumans still over five yep. seconds. So uh, it doesn't look as if uh, uh, Jan Kumans has made any impression 
on uh, our race leader Sergio Mura at this point in time. Yeah, they have clean road ahead of them now, so uh, we'll see. This will be interesting. They both had a nice, clean lap. They're coming up. We'll see what timing and scoring gives us as they go to the start-finish line. Right now, my timing and scoring is showing 5.2 seconds, and as they go across the start-finish, it's uh, 5.6 seconds. So, uh, Cummins is making no grand. In fact, he lost almost half a second. Back to the battle between Tomoki Kono and Sam McAleer. Eden still on Sam, actually backs out of that one. And Tomoki Kono does take the position. Sam McAleer tries to come through uh, and, and come back at him, but it's not happening at this point in time. Meanwhile, Brad Wooden has put another few car links uh, on Tomoki Kono. He is now coming up on the back of a lap car that was Sonny Kanchen. Sonny gave him room to get by. Uh, uh, Sonny used to racing with uh, Brad Wooden in the official series. Uh, good job, Sonny. And uh, Tomoki Kono goes through, as does Sam McAleer. Now they can have a free run uh, at Brad Wooden once again. So Sam McAleer now uh, has lost out on that position. But Bill, it's lap number 54 out of 67, 13 laps to go. Time running out for Jan Kuhlmans to catch Sergio Mura. He may get away with this one, Sergio. But uh, the big battle here is for that fourth place position. And Eric licking their chops is Yuri Giannis back there as McAleer and Koto go at it. Uh, he's, he's running those guys down in sixth position. Yeah, these guys keep on battling out. There's a little few lap traffic between them, but only about a uh, three and a half second gap between uh, McAleer and Giannis. So definitely these guys keep on battling out and go side by side like they have been for the past few laps. Jerry Giannis will be in this battle. We, we could have a four car battle for third. Well, Jerry Giannis has got to negotiate a few lap cars before he can get into that battle. Right now in front of him, we've got Stefan Overgaard. Uh, Lino Chesting now, Stefan, this surprises me, Ed, and Stefan over a good driver, not being able to pass a Lino Chesting, who at best can be described as a, a, a back marker. Well, Lino Chesting's the same speed as me, so he's pretty fast. Ha! All right. <laughs> and modest. Oh. <laughs> All right, well, uh, I will uh, not comment on that one. Uh, Lino Chestang in the 73 machine, he's been involved in just about everything. Uh, and in front of him, uh, uh, Anthony Salentano as well, Stefan Overgaard behind him. Here comes Yanis on Stefan Overgaard. Stefan's on the inside, Stefan backs it down a little bit, allows uh, Jay Yanis to pass good driving. And now Jay Yanis still got a long way to go to Sam McAleer. That's about four seconds, the gap there. So uh, let's get back to the main battle where we see Tomoki Kono Eton has caught up with Brad Wooden and the battle is on. I need to check if Brad Wooden took tires because he definitely doesn't have the same pace as these two guys. In fact, I don't think Kono took tires either. So these guys, they might all be running on race old tires. Well, you know, uh, maybe they just took left sides, but uh, uh, or uh, certainly they, they seem to be on the same pace. And this is a good uh, driving here from Sam McAleer, I think. Uh, Sam could probably be right on the back of these guys, but uh, he's kind of oh, he has a bit of a bobble there coming uh, out of the final turn and uh, sorry, out of the semi final turn and goes into now into a new lap. This is lap 58. So he's sitting back there a little ways uh, from these two who will be battling and are battling for what is in fact the last podium position yet. And so this is where it's at at the moment for the big uh, for the big uh, battle on for third place. I think that, uh, whoa, Sam McAleer pushing as hard as he can. Tomoki Kono also pushing hard through the S's there. Good driving from all these guys, but uh, very difficult to uh, to get any speed up if you've got worn tires yet and, and it looks like you're right these guys have very worn tires yeah and also the interesting thing between these three guys that Tomoki Kono he was the third fastest qualifier started in third with the quick six grid as well and Brad Wooden and Sam McLear they started in 11th and 14th uh, obviously I think they probably qualified a little slower than the actual speed but uh, looks like Tomoki Kono actually going to get a run outside of the chicane. Brad Wooden had a terrible exit at that corner. Sam McAleer is going to get the run as well. He's trying to peek, not going to go three wide into the final corner. Tomoki Kono is going to get the position. Sam McAleer sitting right behind as well. 
Well, it's not done and dusted yet. They go into turn number one. Brad Wooden on the outside. Tomoki Connor on the inside. Brad Wooden cuts in. Good move from Brad there. Will he try uh, through turn number three? San Macalia just sitting back there trying to think about a move on Wooden himself. Uh, decides not to do that. He's right on the back of Wooden now. Wooden struggling. Tires may be uh, the, the thing there. Tomoki Connor looking the stronger of the three. Uh, drivers here but uh, Brad Wooden very good up the hill and uh, he will have an opportunity to attack uh, Tomoki Kono uh, on the approach to the chicane once again they kind of get away a little bit there we see Tomoki Kono going to the inside very defensive driving Brad going to the outside Brad will now attempt a move uh, from the outside lane doesn't get it done in fact loses a little bit of time uh, to Sam McAleer Ayrton this is a great battle yeah, and also to note, with the uh, the gap between Jan Cummins and Sergio Mora has now closed down. Well, actually, last lap it was four and a half. He's now gone back up to five. So uh, these guys are definitely fluctuating. They're about the same pace at the moment. But all the action is for this third place battle. Correct. Uh, just a comment on on the uh, number one, two place uh, positions. Sergio Mora pr probably gets held up a little bit by traffic, and then uh, does Jan Cummins as well. So. If that gap is still the same at this point in time with only seven laps to go five seconds uh, i doubt very much uh, unless something nasty happens to um sergio mura that he will not win this race but now we see the battle on here for the third place position tomoki kono brad wooden having to get through some lap traffic that's reno tani i believe uh, they are all passing now but there's another lap car in front of them Brad Wooden hasn't given up. He's right on the back of uh, uh, Tomoki Kono. Sam McAleer is right on the back of uh, Brad Wooden. This battle for the third place position uh, has not stopped in the last three or four laps. It is uh, uh, driver on driver. Brad Wooden goes to the inside. Sam McAleer uh, tries a run on him from the outside position. That is not the place to be going into turn one. You really have to try and uh, uh, hit that apex. Uh, properly to get any speed going through there so Brad Wooden manages to hang on to that position by going defensive now we see Tomoki Kono going wide that's the possibly what Brad Wooden wanted he's gonna take advantage of that car they touch and Ooh. Brad Wooden oh Ayrton no that was not what we wanted well it's what Sam McAleer wanted Sam McAleer is gonna inherit third place now Jerry Janis is gonna go by these guys for fourth place now I was going well, to compliment McAleer on how patient he was being. Uh, we've had him in the, in the series for four or five seasons. When he first came in here, he never would have waited. Nice job, Sam. I'm sorry to see the guys have trouble in front of you, but that that's a lesson learned. Well, you know, that was unnecessary. Um, you cannot, you cannot go too, too wide through the S's. Uh, it would be a miracle for two cars going at that pace, Ayrton, to get through there side by side. Um, it's, it's just too tough through there. So Brad Wooden now uh, falls back to sixth place. Tomoki Connor falls to fifth place. Uh, Sam McAleer and Jay Yanis inherit those two positions. We are on lap 62. These guys thankfully are still going and there's a car, uh, smoke coming off the car. Anthony Salentano, it is uh, uh, who's uh, pulled his car up thankfully and gets going again but that was a, a, a quite a risky tie for Brad Wooden going through there so Brad Wooden and Tomoki Kono still uh, have an opportunity to battle for these final laps Ayrton but uh, some lap traffic they've got to get through and they are two positions down now both of them I mean that instant was just hard racing Tomoki Kono got a really good run on uh, actually no Brad Wooden got a really good run on Tomoki Kono and I don't like he wouldn't like I don't think anyone would lift out of that scenario. It's a perfect opportunity to go and get that position, but it obviously it's a really tight track, and they had the slightest contact, like the slightest possible contact ever that unsettled Brad Witten's car, and he spun. So I mean that was just close racing between those two guys. Hey, I oh, absolutely. Jump. Uh, Rich, uh, we talked about it early. Benjamin Lanowet is. We talked about him trying to stay on the lead lap. He's so close to being on the lead lap. Mora is closing in on him. He's back by maybe two or three seconds. It's going to be interesting to see if Lenowick can hang on to a lead lap finish. Yeah, two or three seconds. He should be able to. Only six laps left. 
uh, depends on how fast uh, Sergio Mura is closing. I'm looking at Sergio Mura now. We've got Eric Garcia, then a few other cars, and then Benjamin Lanouette. So, yeah, he's got a little way to go. I think he might hang on to that lead lap. Uh, Sergio Mura running a great race here after having some really, really tough times in the earlier races. Good to see Sergio Mura uh, uh, have a strong finish. In, uh, in No stronger can be than a number one finish. Jan Kuhlmans, where is Jan Kuhlmans at this point in time? Jan Kuhlmans coming through turn yep. one right Work. now. Uh, Sergio Mura just going to turn three, so uh, not that big a distance on track, but uh, certainly not enough laps for Jan Kuhlmans to try and make a move. Although he has caught up a little bit now with clear, uh, with you know, clear passage between the two cars. Uh, only four seconds now, Eton. Yeah, Jan Kuhlmans definitely closed up uh, quite a bit. He's been running extremely fast lap times. But I think you're right on uh, that note. There's only about four laps left, and it's a four-second gap. So he's really going to have to bet on Mora uh, having contact with a lap car or making uh, a mistake in one of the corners to really catch up and fight for that lead. The good news is Kuhlmans, or uh, uh, Kono and Wooden, although they got together, they really didn't lose that many positions. They've slotted in nicely fifth and sixth. In fact, Wooden is not done with Kono yet, I don't think. Well, no, and uh, we see uh, Sonny Kenshin once again breaking to let Brad Wooden by. Uh, now Brad Wooden's on the back of uh, uh, Tomoki Connor once again. They have lost two positions, though, unfortunately, to Sam McAleer and Jay Yanis. Sam McAleer now on the podium. But uh, let's watch the battle here, Eden, between Tomoki Kono and, uh, uh, and Brad Wooden. It's been very entertaining, and it isn't done yet in the closing laps. I see a rivalry heating up. <laughs> yes, I indeed. I think so. Now, we do have a lap car in front of them. Looks to me that that is... Who is that? That is Jonathan Keir once again. Now, Tomoki Kono coming back through the SS where they had the problem previously. Brad Wooden is not going to like this. I have to say as well, Ayrton, these two guys uh, are, uh, do battle regularly in the... Um, in the official advanced master cup series now brad wooden on the outside there's this lap car in front of them you uh, lap car is doesn't know where he has to be i think he's going to be right in the middle of these guys as they both pass this is working in brad wooden's favor as the moki connor didn't quite know what to do there now they both clear the lap car brad wooden gets the job done coming out of the chicane he's uh, got back a position on tomoki connor tomoki is not going to like that so uh, the battle is on two laps to go but Brad Wooden really has pulled quite a gap there, Eton. I gotta jump. I, I gotta jump in here because I gotta. I, I can't help but compliment a backmarker when they do good. Jonathan Keir here in a straight line right down there and let those guys split them. Jonathan, nice job, buddy. Yeah, Eton. Um, looks like Brad Wooden has pulled a, a little gap onto Moki Kono. Uh, some more lap traffic there, but you're right, uh, uh, Bill. Uh, that would have been an extremely scary time for Jonathan Keir. And he went right down the middle. One went on the inside, one went on the outside of him. Great driving from him to not uh, hold those guys up and, and keep himself safe at the same time. But uh, back to this battle, uh, Ayrton. Um, I think uh, uh, Brad Wooden got the job done here. Yeah, and that, that uh, the draft from... Um, right, who, who was that? Jonathan Kier, uh, the draft from Jonathan Kier actually helped Brad Wooden uh, get alongside Tomoki Kono even more. It actually allowed him to really just get that job done going into the corner. They didn't even have to finish going side by side on the exit either. So really good job from Brad Wooden. Got that pass really cleanly and e almost easily, I would say. Tomoki Kono has actually fallen back quite a bit. He might actually be struggling on tires at this point in the race. So uh, we're on the last lap now. So uh, he's it's now or never for uh, Tomoki Kono. Meanwhile, guys, we will uh, put the cameras on our race leader, Sergio Mura. Sergio Mura coming through the chicane for the final time on lap 67. He's only got one more corner, well, two more oh. corners uh, to finish. And there's a bunch of lap traffic in front of him. He manages to pass that safely. And now he goes through the final corner, crosses the start-finish line, finishes the race in first place. Jan Kuhlmans finishes in second place, not far behind him, spins his car out in celebration. 
uh, folks, if you're watching that, it's not that uh, he just lost. Uh, he just lost it. He did that on purpose. Jay Yanis will finish now in fourth place. Sam McAlee has already crossed, crossed the line Battle in third for fifth. place. Battle for Here fifth. comes Brad Wooden with the Moki Kono. Brad Wooden does get the job done, Ayrton. The Moki Kono falling in just behind him in sixth place. So uh, then we've got uh, Tom Rathy who blew his engine up in celebration, uh, crossing the line there. Simon Van Doon came in behind that, so uh, it, or just finishing right now. So a bunch of the guys will be finishing. Let's have a look at Benjamin Lanowet coming there up to the chicane now. He will finish on the lead lap, Bill, so you will be happy about that, and so yeah. will he, no doubt. Take your time, Benjamin. You're the last car. Slow down. Enjoy the view. <laughs> and then we have all the other guys uh, finishing all a lap down, so they really are all finished already because they have got the white flag yep. at the same time as the leader. So uh, we uh, will take a break, folks. We will come back, give you the full standings. 42 cars uh, finished this, well, entered this race uh, or took the, the green flag. As cars are everywhere right now, but we'll be right back. And uh, just uh, uh, we'll have some driver interviews as well. See you soon.
Welcome back, folks, to the QRS Blondie's MX-5 World Tour. Once again, guys, we saw a fantastic race. Uh, the race won by Sergio Mura. So before we go any further, let's go down this list of 42 drivers, starting with a number one, Sergio Mura. In second place, we had Jan Kuhlmans, 4.4 seconds back to Sergio Mura in second place. Sam McAlee, a good podium finish, taking advantage of uh, some troubles between Brad Wooden and Tomoki Kono and uh, uh, getting himself a very, very good third place. Jay Yanis uh, finished in fourth place, opportunistic finish uh, from him there, but a very solid race as well. Fifth place from Brad Wooden, sixth place Tomoki Kono, fierce battle between those two in the closing laps. A very good 7th position for Tom Rathy, 8th uh, position claimed by Simon Van Doon, ninth place by Benjamin Lanouet, the last car on the lead lap, and Ayrton 10th place, Dujon Baldron. It was actually side by side, finished between Baldron and Trevor Mack, who finished 11th right behind him. Roy Visser in 12th, good finish for him from 28th position. Carlos Torres in 13th, Sonny Canton in 14th, Leonor Chastain in 15th, Mihai Masayson in 16th, Stefan Overgarden in 17th, Andy Morgan in 18th, and then Anthony Celentano, William Wright in 20th. Bill? 21st, rookie Derek Holland, followed by Jerome Yersom, Eric Garcia, 24th, Jonathan Keir. Some great driving from Jonathan Keir. I know he's 24th, but man, that was some excellent work as a backmarker. Uh, Reno Tanny in 25th. Benjamin, get my cursor out of the way. Which Benjamin is it? It's Benjamin Nelson. Joseph Arrow, 27th. Uh, here we go. Diego is Isquiel. I'll work on that one. Robert Ripple in 29th. <laughs> drives nice is what I'm going to start calling this, guys. In 30th is Drives Nice, I believe it is. 31st is Timo Tuliena. A rough season for Timo. Uh, 32nd, Anjad Yaman, Mih uh, Matthias Sony, we saw him upside down, John Kuhnman, uh, Jacob Bush uh, uh, Bichonet, uh, Yanni Tulianen, Timo's brother, uh, Guillermo Ratos. Uh, these guys must 61 back. I'm not sure what happened here. Jesus Cecilia, we know what happened there. Uh, Thomas Zabo, 62 back. Evan Maillard, 62 back. John Deuce Allen, get Try to finish the first lap, John. Come on, buddy. And Mr. Disappointment, Oki Stokenberger in 66th. I'm done. Back to you, Rich. <laughs> yeah, Oki Stokenberger, magnificent one lap from Oki and uh, finished in last place. Very unfortunate. He is a lot better than that, folks. Uh, we want to just see him get a clean first lap and no doubt we'll see him up near the front. Well, that is the standings. 42 drivers uh, took the uh, green flag and 42 drivers uh, finished as we just said. Now, we have some interviews ready and we will start with uh, Jerry Yanis and Bill's going to talk to Jerry. Now, I think this is Ayrton. Oh, Ayrton. Sorry. Go ahead, Ayrton. Thanks, Sir Jerry. The, you there? Yeah, I am. Well, fourth place, definitely a great position for you. That's going to help you here in the championship a ton. Uh, what were your impressions on the race in, in general to start? Well, the race was kind of busy, although I wasn't really racing anyone closely for position after I made some contact with Brad since I dropped a bit time there, and then I was mostly hot lapping myself, but the traffic kept it interesting throughout the race. Now, uh, since this is this was a two-stop race, a, a longer race, almost an endurance race for you guys, um, a lot of guys, I think, did quite a few different pitch stop strategies. Uh, did you take any tires in either of your stops, and how did you just uh, go about your pitch stop strategy? I did take all four tires on both stops. If you split the fuel evenly, then you can take all four, four tires at this track without losing any time during the pit stop. Well, that's definitely good to know. That probably would have helped us a little bit uh, during the race after the pit stop cycles. We were a little bit confused about who took tires, who not, but who didn't. But I guess everyone did at that point. Well, um, definitely great finish for you, Jerry Janice. Uh, disappointing that your teammate couldn't uh, be up there with you. I know you guys are always close to each other on the finishing uh, positions. Yeah, we were again racing it back. Okay, right thanks again. Yeah, thanks. No, oh, sorry about that. Uh, thanks for talking to us, Jerry. Back to you, Richard. 
Yeah, no problems. Thank you, Ethan. And we will um, now bring in Sam McAleer and uh, Bill Zahn will talk to Sam. Go ahead, Bill. Sam, congratulations on the podium. I want you to actually correct me if I'm wrong on this, okay? I thought your patience when you were sitting back in, in fifth place behind uh, behind Wooden and Kono that you were, I don't think you would have been that patient two or three seasons ago. What were you thinking when you were back there? Uh, we brought Sam in a little bit oh. late there. Um, Bill, just okay. repeat the question. Sam may not be aware that you're talking to I, him. I can do it quick. Sam, you got me? Uh, yes, I do. All right. It's important that if, if I'm not on base here, I want you to correct me if you think I'm, I'm not right on this one. I thought that's some of the best driving I've seen from you ever. When you were sitting in fifth place behind Kono and Wooden and they were battling it out, I don't think you would have shown that patience a couple seasons ago. What were you thinking when you were back there watching those guys go at it? Well, I was just waiting for something to happen, really, and then I was going to take advantage. Um, I knew that towards the closing laps of the race, we were all going to be battling hard, so I thought I would just let them battle hard early on and see what happened, and it turned into an advantage for me. Yeah, there were a couple times where I saw you poke your nose in there, and you said, yeah, no, there'll be other opportunities. That was really impressive. Um, let's talk about the setup. Now, I think you know that, that we're this setup is going away. This is a Season 8 setup, but we're going to something similar last like we had last season it's kind of hard to have a setup taken away when you just got your first podium but i think you're going to be uh looking forward to that new setup aren't you uh yes i am i actually tried that setup on this track um a few days ago and it did feel much better than the, the current one so it should be should be good for all of us what's the big thing it, it rotates a little bit better is that what you think it is Yes, yes it does. Yeah, okay, that's going to be interesting to watch how that works out. Hey Sam, this is a huge, huge finish for you. You are having a great season. Keep it up and we'll see you next time. Thank you. Back to you, Rich. Thank you, Bill. And now for our last interview, or possibly our last interview, we will bring in Jan Kumans and I'll have a chat to Jan. Well, Jan Kumans is with me in the booth right now. Jan Kumans, um, a good first stint for you there. Uh, certainly uh, got up to the front, led very well. And uh, I'm a little mystified as to how you lost the position to Sergio. Can you tell us what happened there? Yeah, hi Richard, sure thing. Uh, basically, I just had a brush with a back marker, which uh, completely uh, damaged my steering. and. Uh, I had to go another lap around where it, because the car was basically undrivable that lap. I lost three, four seconds in one lap, and then I went into the pits. Uh, after the pits, the car was more or less okay, except that my steering wheel was pointing around 30 degrees the wrong way, which makes it pretty difficult to drive. <laughs> okay, that does certainly explain it. Well, this is your best finish for the season so far. And, uh, uh, you know, is the enthusiasm still there to keep going in this uh, in this series? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I'm certainly frustrated enough at the moment. I mean, I felt like I had four pretty bad races, four bad races so far, but in two of them, basically, the only reason I didn't win was that I got uh, into to some car contact. So I guess it can't be too bad. But yeah, well, what can you do? Well, that's right. That's right. And, you know, you certainly have the pace to keep up with the best of them and in fact to be in front of the best of them so it all comes down to uh, the lap traffic uh, and of course the battles you will get into um, it must have been a little pleasing for you to uh, watch that orange car um, uh, get uh, right out of the way yeah, not really actually. I felt kind of disappointed because at the beginning I felt, well, I'll just sit back because I, I thought that I had pretty much the pace to, to win over, over the long distance with the pit stops and everything, which uh, those guys haven't been too good at recently. Uh, I was a little bit quicker than them, but I had a slowdown which put me uh, put me behind them, so I was just following and it got slightly out of control with some, with some contact and name calling and it was very pretty. Uh, Richard, let me j let me uh, jump in for a second. Uh, Jan, are you looking? This is Bill. Are you looking forward to going back to that kind of season seven setup? Do you think that's going to fit you a little bit better? 
On this track, I think it didn't, didn't matter much for me. I mean, uh, in, in this weather, with this setup broke just fine on this track. I mean, I had plenty of oversteer when I wanted it. It's not an issue. It just when when we get like uh, clear skies and the track temperatures right. goes up, then then it becomes basically you know like you're driving a front wheel drive car with with sticky tires on the back. Got it. Well, congratulations, Rich. Uh, uh, thanks, uh, Jan. Sorry to put in on you there, Richard, but I, I wanted to see what he had to say about that setup. Back to you, Rich. <laughs> okay, not a problem. All right, Jan. Well, we go forward into, uh, I think it is uh, Brands Hatch, next one. Uh, one of your favorite tracks, or you don't like it? Uh, I don't remember. I think, I think I'm kind of okay there. It'll depend on how the car feels. I haven't tried it yet. I hope we're doing the long track, not the short one. Yeah, uh, the short one. You know, Bill likes to throw curveballs at everybody, so who knows? Uh, but I do think we're doing the long track there. Well, Jan, second place uh, in this company, not a bad finish. Um, we are hopeful to see you on the number one podium step uh, in the future. And thank you for talking to us. Cheers, guys. See you lot next week. Alrighty. Well, that finishes off our broadcast for today. Once again, an exciting race. Ethan, what were your impressions uh, of this race at this track? Um, well, I mean, it, it was definitely a race that gave us a lot of action, almost uh, as high up there in Sebring as exciting races uh, with that third place battle between Kono, uh, Wooten, and McAleer. So, and also just the, uh, I guess, psychological battle between uh, Sergio Moore and Jan Kums, even though they didn't really battle each other uh, driver to driver, they still had to run really fast laps in order not to, in order to keep the gap separated for Sergio Mora. So uh, it, that definitely created some interesting things, and this is going to spice up the championship a lot with a lot of those top runners like Evan Maillard uh, ruining and not having good race this race. Yeah, quite quite true there. And Bill, your thoughts uh, on this series and uh, this race? Well. I was in a good mood there because I thought everything went smoothly. I thought the back markers did a pretty good job. And then I hear Kubin's telling that people are whining and complaining. Those drivers, I'm going to sit them in there. I'm going to give them all a timeout. Uh, so <laughs> let's see how that works out as I'm on IRT duty. Uh, we should be in better shape next week. We're going to the, the big course at uh, at uh, Brant's Hatch. So that should uh, that should take the pressure off of these guys. But uh, good good race, and it's going to tighten up the it's going to tighten up the standings for sure. Yeah, and I do know uh, that Brad Wooden loves um, Brands Hatch, so look for him to have a very good race there. Personally, I thought it was a good race. I really enjoyed the battle between Brad and Tomoki. Uh, it was exciting to watch. Um, I liked uh, when Jan Kumus was leading early. I thought this was his opportunity to have a good win. Sergio Mura, my teammate, did a great job in... in uh, jumping him in the pits and then finishing him off by four seconds so good racing from everybody disappointing to see some of the top names uh, fall out of the race early uh, Jesus Cecilia Evan Mayard uh, those guys uh, uh, fell out very very early in the race after about seven laps or so so disappointing to see that Tomas Zabo has yet to have a good race uh, this season uh, he's having some awful luck but then again, uh, some guys had uh, great races, uh, guys like uh, Tom Raffi and Giannis uh, and McAleer. So, uh, you know, swings and roundabouts, and it, uh, it, it, it turns out for the best for everyone, no doubt. Well, this is the end of the broadcast now, and as usual, we do want to thank a whole bunch of people and organizations. Firstly, we would like to thank our title sponsor, Blondie's Bar in Long Beach. Please visit uh, blondieslb.com. Blondies is the place to be. Cozy Cabins in Green Valley Lake. Visit cozycabinsgreenvalleylake.com to reserve top quality lodging at a reasonable price. GVL is the best kept secret of South, uh, Southern California's San Bernardino Mountains. And uh, while you're there on your stay, do stop in at the Eagle Nest Tavern. We would also like to thank everybody at the Quality Racing Syndicate for organizing this series. We also thank iRacing.com, XSplit, Twitch TV, Audio Technica, Behringer, Ava Media. These guys provide all the software and hardware that we use in these broadcasts. 
Thank you also to the team today. Uh, Bill, thank you. Ayrton, thank you. And of course, uh, Director Giancarlo, thank you. And thanks also to our spotter, uh, Joe Peak, who, uh, who was in the background there uh, watching what the uh, action was like. If you would like to find out more about GSRC, our website is www.globalsimracingchannel.com. There you will find our full broadcast schedule. There'll be archived races to have a look at and also race highlights from previous races. We are also on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash global sim racing channel. Uh, you will also find us on Twitter. Our handle is at GSR channel. A very special thank you to Eric Ekholm who provides us with some great music. You can find it uh, not only here, but also uh, in TV commercials, movie trailers, on iTunes and Spotify as well. If you do like the music, tell Eric where you heard it at Eric Ekholm. We also have a new album coming out from Casey Lalonde who provides music for us as well. Uh, Casey has the new album out, uh, I think it's called The Floating Room. It'll be coming out very soon. Uh, do have a look for Casey Lalonde and um, uh, go to bandcamp.com and find out more about that. We have a bunch of upcoming races in the following week. In a few hours time, in fact, one hour's time, the start of the Continental Endurance Sports Car Series practice at Road America featuring the Mustang and MX-5. Don't miss that one. It's a two-hour race. It will be a great one, no doubt. Uh, tomorrow, Sunday, 5th of, of uh, October, we have the Northwest Majors race at Road Atlanta. Same track, but only the full version. And there we will see uh, in action the Ford GTs, uh, the McLarens, the roof tracks, and also the Z4. Uh, next Wednesday, the 8th of October, we have Champion Motorsports uh, starting a season and they will be running at Interlagos with uh, the Z4, McLarens and Roof Track. And next Saturday, we will have the next race in this series, the QRS Blondies MX-5 World Tour. That'll be, as uh, Bill said, uh, at Brands Hatch, the full track, the Grand Prix track. And we will see the MX-5s going around there once again. We love our MX-5s. And uh, indeed, uh, we want to see everybody uh, uh, back again for that race. So until then, race clean, race hard, and we'll see you somewhere on track.